Uh, up next, we had uh, Nikki Bella come into the ring and talked about needing her sister's support before a big match at Night of Champions and Bree's hurtful words. So now, let's just establish something. Okay, so now Nikki wanted Bree's support. A week ago, she wanted Bree to quit. This woman needs to make up her mind. <laughs> I, I hate to be... I hate to be that dick, but I have no, to don't. come in. No, you don't. You don't. Uh, have to not, not, not. In the, I guess not in this angle. I don't because I have to confess. You paid more attention than I did because I, I didn't even think of that as a criticism. I, I just have stopped caring. Like, I'm so glad you picked up on like she said, like the lack of support when just last week she wanted like Brie to Quinn just get out of her life and all this stuff. I didn't even pay attention to the disconnect because. Their problems just don't matter to me. So I can't believe this. But in this one case, yeah, you actually paid more attention to these two than I did. So good on you there. And, uh, yeah, what does Nikki want now in her latest list of recoculous demands? <laughs> well, before she wanted Brie to quit. Well, now I guess she sees that that's not going to happen. She's already got the theme music, so she's inching closer and closer to being the only Bella in town. And now she wants to finish the job because she wants exclusive rights to the Bella name. If there was ever a time to make me smile and do something right, if we're really going to go into the uh, realm of intellectual property, copyright, all that stuff, bring back David Otunga to represent Nikki Bella. I mean, if we're, if we're really going to go all the way with this, just, yeah, take it to court. Take it to court and have, have David Otunga represent Nikki Bella, because that would be all smiles for me. And but they're not going to do that because again it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think WWE is taking this seriously anymore. If they're going to dig that far down that you're feuding over the name Bella, are you serious? Oh. Yes, John, they are. It which makes... is the worst part about it. I know, like you, you screwed it up. It, it's bad enough that me and Ashton really just don't care, which I guess kind of boggles some of your minds because I'm still going on about it. But it was just supposed to be about the fact that Nikki screwed Bree out of her match with Stephanie at SummerSlam. You could have ridden that gravy to like all the way through, but now you're just saying. Growing up, Bella, oh, it was so hard to be me with everything that Bree's done. And now, now we go here. Now we go here where you want name rights. <laughs> it's... <laughs> when we do our end of the year awards, I swear, this is going to get the worst feud of the year for me. But also, it, it's also going to get most comical if that's a category. Because it's just been so unintentionally hilarious. It's, it's great. I mean... <sighs> I don't even know. Because Nikki isn't even being, like you said, Ashton, with the contradictions in her demands and everything. She's not even making it so that I could sympathize with Brie. Like, I feel nothing for any party involved. I don't feel contempt for Nikki. I don't feel sympathy for Brie. You couldn't even flip it and get that right where I could even feel sympathy for Nikki and maybe contempt for Brie. I just feel nothing for anybody. Anybody. Like, I just want this to be done. And thankfully, we get a much welcomed interruption from AJ. Because it seems like, yeah, AJ versus uh, Nikki is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess we could segue into that, unless, of course, Ashton, you want to put in your two cents on this wonderful interaction between the Bella Twins. So. Well, John, <laughs> I could. But on the other hand, <laughs> I really like having some sanity. You and me so both. I'm, I'm going to not. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. So we do get AJ versus Nikki, and that's another interesting thing to come from this SmackDown because – And you know Smack what, dude? Here's the crazy thing. This match wasn't bad. Nikki has gotten so much better in the ring. The only thing about this match that I could complain about was real, just Nikki randomly holding her butt up against AJ's and pushing her stomach up against the ropes for no reason whatsoever. That and her cross arm breaker, which on one hand I'll commend Nikki for trying to diversify her repertoire. Yeah, I mean she, if, she's trying. It wasn't great execution. Maybe she should talk to her sister's husband and try and get us some lessons on how to properly execute a submission. But uh, as we've done on NXT in the past, I feel like we'd be hypocritical, and I'm glad you did say she's at least trying, and that should always be commendable for any talent. Of Just course. Just keep working on it. Keep, and, I, and I say that with the utmost sincerity, not even trying to be a jacket. Like, keep working on it, because there's something there. And even, like, her power offense, I have warmed up to somewhat. Like, at first I just thought it was a grand joke. Like, really, Nikki, you're going to try and be the next Beth Phoenix? But 
I, I am warming up to it. Plus, she's even uh, added some semi-high flying to it, I guess, because she even has her own version of the disaster kick now, which I really like. So, yeah, Nikki's actually putting in the time, and her offense is getting better. This was a solid match besides, again, that whole butt maneuver where I'm like, what what is the effectiveness of that? But, again, as I was saying, it was funny this match happened because on SmackDown, you had Paige defeat Nikki Bella with AJ on commentary, and here everything was reversed. You had AJ versus Nikki, but this time Paige was on commentary, and Paige was a highlight as well, because it seemed like she had semi-new gear going on. I noticed she was wearing gloves, kind of had a jacket going on. I kind of liked the look uh, that she was rocking there, and she's like, oh, we're not frenemies anymore. We're just we're just enemies. I can't believe she did that to me. I can't believe she took my Divas Championship, which I, I think is much needed. No more, like, screwing around. The lines have clearly been drawn. These guys, you know, do not like each other. And so, you know, she's on commentary. I loved how she's like, don't don't get me mad, JBL, because JBL seemed like he was poking the bear a few times on commentary, which was fantastic. Yeah, he tends to do that quite often. And uh, in the end, AJ does pick up the win, you know, with the Black Widow. Nikki tried to get to the ropes, and I'm glad she at least showed some resistance, but in the end, she does tap out. If there was one nitpick I had about this match, it was actually the ending, because it seemed like Paige was going to do something, and then her and AJ kind of have, like, a brief stare down, but then they quickly cut to something else. Like, it just seemed like an awkward cut, like these two women weren't even done with their segment yet, and then we uh, we went back in to check on Dean Ambrose. So that was my only complaint, but other than that, this was a, this is a nice segment, not as uh, offensive as I thought it would be, considering that Nikki Bella was involved. Again, she's definitely stepped up her game, so... Not as offensive as you thought it would be. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. When it comes to the Bellas, maybe I should just assume that the that the cringe factor is only going to be when they try and cut promos, because that is still their weakest area. But in ring, yeah. I think both have become entertaining to a degree. So again, we always try and be honest. We always try and be fair. And yeah, good, good on them at least for that. But if they could work on their promo ability, that'd be great, because <laughs> it's, it's not over. <laughs> Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I, again, like, I want to be with some seriousness, but you just, you can't. Like, because they're not taking it seriously. Any feud that takes recourse of arguing over the name, oh, you can't use the name Bella anymore. Like, it's clear you're not even taking it seriously anymore, so why should I? Come on, guys. It's so bad. It is. It's just, just so bad, John. Just one day, Jerry Springer is going to look back on this and he's going to think, "Wow, I allowed myself to appear on this." And think about the stuff that he's done over the years. Oh God, <laughs> it's been <pretty> bad. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like I said, we we do cut back uh, to Amber, but I don't even think really much happened here. I just think the commentators wanted to flash to see that the security was still on standby at the door. I don't think Triple H or anybody showed up or anything. I don't think anything significant happened. Um, so really not much to say there. Not really anything to say there, John. So what was our next segment? Our next segment was John Cena versus Randy Orton. Okay, so this was our main event of the evening. I'm glad we, we, we finally arrived there. Yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, I noticed a lot of people probably skipped out on this match because... You know, I really did think that Randy Orton versus John Cena... At the Why World, would anyone uh, want to skip out on this match, John? We've never seen it before. I know. I really... I, I wanted to believe in WWE that, that Randy Orton versus John Cena at the Royal Rumble for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship... Would have been the last time? Good joke. Would have, would have been the last time, yeah. And, and we get it on a Raw. We get it on a freaking Raw. You know, I almost, almost would have preferred just Dean Ambrose versus John Cena... Winner gets Seth Rollins or some crap rather than this again. But no, we we got this. And really, the only notable moment in this match, because I'm not even trying again to to be mean here, but when you've seen one Randy Orton versus John Cena match, especially at this point in their careers, you've seen all of them. The only standout was the variation that Randy Orton does on his rope hung DDT because he did it from the top rope. But that was really the only standout thing here. Um... Might as well just uh, work over the finish. It ends in DQ when Seth Rollins and Kane just get the jump on Cena because he had the STF on Orton. Because apparently, oh Orton yeah, of course he had the STF on Orton and he was about to win, and then all of a sudden the heels come in out of nowhere and oh, who would have thunk it? 
So, yeah, they start putting the boots to Cena, and then they make the great unveiling uh, of the surprise, which was a legitimate surprise to no one. Uh, well, I guess it's not entirely true, because, I mean, it was the cinder blocks, but also underneath them was Dean Ambrose. I know, it was great. Who, after that trick, has proven himself to be a level 35 Grand Wizard at least. And here I thought we were just going to go for the Solid Snake comparisons. Yeah, I, I saw that image that uh, that you sent me after the show, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe that I got the reference, because I've only played one Metal Gear Solid game, but that was enough. But <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So Great. good. So very, very good. Ambrose tries getting the jump again, as uh, as does Cena, because he re-enters the fray. Rollins again escapes, and again, I, I wanted to give myself to this segment and really enjoy it because it's Ambrose, but it's like John Cena is that uncomfortable like pinprick in the back of your mind, just constantly reminding you, yep, I'm getting involved in this, I'm getting involved in this, and you just want to groan and say why. You know, just just why? 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 Exactly. I almost feel like going full Keenan Thompson. Why? There and, you go. Yeah, and 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 that that's really it because there's again, as we established in our very first segment, it's funny how the circle, you know, pretty much completes itself. The snake eating its own tail. Uh, you know, heat of the night and stuff like that. Why? Why is Cena getting involved in this at all? There's no place. It's just an awkward fit, and it's gonna carry itself to hell in a cell, which. Has even bigger problems, because then what was the point of the whole night? A champion's finished. What's Lesnar doing? Are we not going to see him again until Survivor Series? What is going on? And I guess now, once again, my hopes and dreams of Orin and Lesnar feuding are just meant by the creative department with laughs. Laughs and pointing, pointing and laughs. So that's where we all are, and that was pretty much Monday Night Raw. Again, it was a fun closer, but just John Cena's presence just reminds you of what's to come inevitably. And that's uh, that's not a good feeling. So, Ashton, if you have anything to add, I guess we can wrap this up and move on to our next segment. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this baby up. It was nice to see uh, nice to see Dean Ambrose being the last guy being shown on Raw with his music playing and John Cena kind of playing a back role. That's nice. Yeah, it's called John Cena learning his place. Yeah. Let's hope that he continues to do that for the remaining weeks leading up to this pay-per-view. Because so help me if you ruin this for Dean Ambrose, who's one of the best acts on the product right now with everybody that we've got out and everybody who I guess you choose not to showcase on your product. Dean is one of the most entertaining aspects of every three-hour Raw. I mean, and I and I say that genuinely. Like, he, he's just such a... Without a doubt. Yeah. He's been I, the best I, thing on Raw since Barrett and Brian got hurt. And even when they were around, I think that Ambrose... This incarnation of Ambrose would have been challenging them for that spot. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel like if all three guys are still around, Raw, I think, would be looked at more favorably than what it currently is. I Absolutely. Because really we would have three to five segments per night that we enjoy rather than one to three. Hell, I'm I'm even really missing Ryback at this point because I know he's still recovering. Um, so just like, I can't wait for all these guys to be back. I really can't. Cause I, I think one, it's going to be interesting to see how the product transforms with their re-emergence and reintegration in it. And two, it'll be interesting to see the kind of storylines again. I just keep thinking, honestly, already at this point, I know we're just in October about the road to WrestleMania, particularly for the John Cena's and the Dean Ambrose is like, where do you fit at WrestleMania 31? Um, so that's going to be an interesting question in the coming months that will get answered, but this was raw. So moving on to our next segment.